Episode 43 is brought to you by Canvas People and First Leaf Wines. Oh! You know what we... Wait, are we airing? Are we recording? Mm-hmm. Since it's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Pass! The cranberry sauce for having mashed potatoes. Ooh, the turkey looks great. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there. Everyone's thinking. Boom. Boom. The whole world's thinking you. For thinking us. For thinking you. Kill the turkey. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! You're welcome, world. I was going to say, if only we could copyright that song and put it on our shirts, that would be grand. Uh, If we could just take the copyright from Bob's Burgers. (laughs) It should be easy, right? It's not like they're known. It's not like it's that expensive. No one knows about them. No. Patreon will cover it. Um... Happy Thanksgiving. Why are you drinking slash why are you thankful or not thankful? I mean, it's also by the time this comes out after Thanksgiving. Oh, so we can just skip the bullshit then? I mean, what do you think you enjoyed the most of your Thanksgiving? Let's just make another prediction out of these. Probably the wine. All right. Um, The thing is, I'm hosting a Friendsgiving this week and I'm like cooking because we were going to go back to Blaze's place, but I'm doing one here instead. So... Who knows if I can make a turkey? Who knows? It'll be like a big mystery for everybody. I'm so upset I don't get to watch it happen. It's kind of bummed. I know. I'm bummed you can't go. I know. I'm going to be visiting family in Seattle. So That's nice, though, to be with family. Yeah. And it's become a tradition that I, um, like, I was never really close with them before I moved out to L.A. because they were West Coast and I never saw them. And now that I've been out here, I go see them every Thanksgiving just because it's cheaper airfare. But they actually are now, like, my favorite family members. Yeah. And I don't have to deal with the bullshit of, like, being a child of divorce and having to, like, split my time between two families and all that nonsense. That's why I stopped going. I stopped going to think. I, if I could not go home for Christmas, I would, just because that's yeah. such bullshit. I mean, so. I, we've, I stopped going to Thanksgiving years ago because I was like, it's not worth it. It's not. It's not. Especially for Thanksgiving when, you know, if you have jobs, you only get, like, a day off yeah. or two days off. So for me, to travel to the East Coast is a day there of travel a day back of travel so i get like what a day and i have to split it between both my parents and see who gets less frustrated with the other oh and p.s it's two thousand dollars also oh also yeah (laughs) it's just it's just stupid so now i actually hang out with my mom's little sister and her family and she's like the fun aunt oh nice so i get her all to myself without having to share with my east coast family so so we just brought this down by talking about divorce, but happy Thanksgiving. Just wait till Christmas, guys. But it's, here's the thing. Everyone just had Thanksgiving with their family, so they're all probably pulling their hair out. You know what I mean? Or are they even listening to us? They're probably still like in their food comas. Maybe. But also, we're being rude to our international listeners who don't celebrate the horrible things we did to people when we first got to this land. Oh, right. You should start celebrating that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you should also enjoy how horrible Americans are that we have a national holiday celebrating how horrible we are to people. And now we, and we call ourselves the heroes and, and the victims all at the same time. We, we do. And there's also a lot of murals of us feeding um, Native Americans when in reality Ugh. we just fed them with smallpox. It's disgusting. Yeah. We're sorry. Why are we so depressing? Because <laughs> we have a podcast called And That's Why We Drink. <laughs> uh, I need some wine. Okay, happy Chris, happy almost Christmas is now. Happy almost Christmas. At least we're in the holidays. Or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah. I, happy Hanukkah to me. Happy Hanukkah to you. Do you actually celebrate Hanukkah? Mm, on the month, on the years that I remember. Like, yeah, but like with your, like growing up, did you celebrate it? Or did we you did the menorah, Christmas? Um, at, like for irony. Like what? <laughs> we would just be like, well, we're Jewish. We should have a menorah. But we, we didn't do like the holiday. No. Oh. We never, like, grew up celebrating Hanukkah. It was more like, if we looked at the calendar in time, my mom would be like, I'm supposed to buy you some shitty presents, so happy Hanukkah. Oh, so it was, like, a convenience thing. It was, like, we, like put, fair the, weather. we put the ish in Jewish, mm. you know what I mean? <laughs> Is that a thing? I don't know. I love it. It's what we are, though. It has to be a thing now. How are you? I'm okay. Why are you drinking? Because I nearly threw out my back this weekend. Oh, shit. And I didn't throw out my back because I, I know what that feels like because I have a really shitty back. Mm. Um, for anyone who wants to know my weakness. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> if you want to attack M. You triangulate your location. I'll triangulate my weak points. <laughs> <laughs> the eighth vertebrae. <laughs> <laughs> but Allison's been so sweet this weekend because I haven't been able to move. And so she's been like pulling me out of bed and like Aww. pulling me off the couch and like 
Em, I didn't know you were in such pain. I am. I'm sorry. It's all right. I should have crushed some Tylenol in your drink. Yeah, that would have helped. Next time. It's okay. Um, Why are you drinking? I mean, mostly because I'm just nervous about making a turkey, and also this job that I'm doing is really hard, and also we are shipping out. I had to ship out 285 packages yesterday. Yowza. And I got to the post office five minutes after it closed. But I will say, by the time you hear this, everybody's... Merch and Patreon stuff has, has all got up. been sent. It's all caught up. It's out. It's all done. Oh my god! Wait, I'm and like, then I'll, I'll do the thing. Ready? Yeah. Wait, we gotta take the cork out. Do it. You know physics. Oh right, shit. sure. Phys- it's mathematics. It's exponents. Ready? Yeah. That was good, right? Okay. Yeah. Ow! That hurt I know. My ears. I know. Wait, I wanted two takes, and I should just stayed on a high. <sighs> you know, you gotta quit while you're ahead. But anyway, so we have had. All that shipping bullshit since the beginning of time, we've been telling you your shipping will come out, your shipping will come out. And we were telling the truth, but things just kept getting backlogged. But we are officially caught up. Yes. As of today. Also, we have new merch. We have new merch and a whole new situation system. going on. A whole new system. Christine is a wizard. She figured it out. The internet is a wizard. Christine found the part of the internet that's a wizard. I'm just the apprentice, if there you will. Is. There it is. Uh, the internet's apprentice. Um, yeah. Yeah. We have new merch. We have uh, also, by the way, if you guys have art, if you're like artistic in any way, or even if you're not and you just like design something, send it to us and we want to put it on merch. Um, we already have a coffee cup. Yeah. With uh, if you follow the Facebook group, someone drew a very nice um, Ronnie. Almost, almost a screen grab. Yeah. Ronnie did it off of our Halloween video. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's literally a coffee mug now. It's amazing. It's me with my wine bra. Gio's like freaking out in the car. <laughs> em has like a milkshake. Yep. Thing. Camelback. Yep. It's great. And we put it on a mug. So we're trying to get everybody's like artistic talent involved on the website. If so, you care enough to draw something or be artistic in any way for us, we're trying to help you and put it on stuff. So. And if you have done it in the past and sent it to us on social media, send it to our email. And that's why we drink at gmail.com. Please write in the email that you agree to let us use it on merchandise. Just put it in yeah. writing and then put, if you want us to link to your Etsy or your website or whatever, put that there too. Um, that way I can just have it in writing that we're allowed to use it. And all in one spot too. Yeah. Is it just our usual shop URL? Yep. Same same shop. And that's why we drink bigcartel.com. Correct. And there's a lot of new merch on there. Um, of different colors. Different colors now, different designs. We have like baseball tees and baseball caps. And I love baseball a good baseball cap. Bats? No, we don't no, have we, that yet. No, we don't. We have baseballs? No. No, not quite. Maybe one day we'll have a tennis ball for Baby G. That would be adorable. That'd be a good time. Also, I think I know why else you're drinking. Hmm. Because tomorrow is Baby G's first day of doggy daycare. I'm really stressed out. Okay, but here's the thing. You ready? What? He's going to make a best friend at the doggy daycare. Okay. They're going to start talking about true crime and ghosts. You promise? They're going to be on a hayride. I'm really nervous. They're going to say, you know what? We should start a podcast about this. I, um, Gio used to go to daycare at PetSmart when I was working as a PA 12 hours a day. I had no other choice. And they gave me a report card, quote unquote, one day. And, um... (laughs) I guess they said, Gio has learned how to use the plastic kitty slide, and he Aww. loves to run up and slide down it. And I was like, is that real? Like, I think the cutest experience would have been watching him go up at the first time, and he's a little scared, but then he does, <laughs> and he's so brave, and then he does it, and he's so happy. And he does uh, it again. <laughs> I would lose my mind. Listen. It's probably for the best neither of us were there. His best friend at PetSmart was named Elvis. It was a giant Great Pyrenees. Oh, so you're right. It, it'll be He's fine. He's gonna make a best buddy, and then you can have doggy play dates. Oh my god. Uh, oh, okay. I'm so anxious. He's gonna have so much fun. All right. Um, that's all my notes. I just am excited about new merch and um, just like getting stuff situated so people don't have to wait. And uh, oh, the holidays are coming. Um, get your stuff in. I think it's by. I saw on our new. Um, we have a site that we're synced to that helps us with merch now. I think they said. The 30th of November is the last day to buy merch and have it arrive in time for Christmas with Ooh. free shipping. So Ooh. get on it. I need my friends and family to be really big fans of the show. That way I can just buy them my own merch and just be like, Merry fucking Christmas. I know. 
Now you'll think of me. Now you'll think of me all the time. It's something we can both enjoy. I'll give my parents the one of me in a wine bra and they'll be like, I'm so disappointed. Recently, Linda actually sent me a box of blank shirts with no instruction. And then I texted her and was like, what the fuck are these for? <laughs> and she was like, oh, you're going to put the design on them so I can wear your podcast on my shirts. What? And I was like, hmm. Well, you could have asked. Wait, she sent you a bunch of blank Literally, shirts? A box of random shirts from J. Crew or some shit like that. Or Chico's or something. Oh my And then God. she was like, well, obviously you're going to put the design on them. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I was a fucking clairvoyant, but okay. And then- Linda is a trip. In that box, she also sent a melted bar of chocolate. Good. And she sent a sleeve of CDs from like 10 years ago. Like out of their cases, just like, you know how- cars had like oh, the yeah, cd the case sleeve. yeah yeah that you put on like your your mirror mm-hmm. she sent one of those like d- like she took it off of a car and it's still had a bunch of cds from like of like jackson brown and like things that no one listens to off of a car like whose car maybe hers she literally just sent me a sleeve of random and they're CDs. not your cds no <laughs> <laughs> and then a box of blank shirts and i was like good luck figure it out <laughs> what also today, Christine and I listened to two songs back to back, and one was my mother's wedding song, and the other was Christine's wedding song, and they both played on their own without us trying to put them on. That was pretty awkward. You and my mom are the same person. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little awkward, but I'm, I'm, I embrace it now. Good. I'm gonna start mailing you random objects from my house. Ugh. Thank God I don't put my address out on this thing because I'd get a box of random shit all the time. <laughs> hey. Hello. I, I have a really good idea. What's that? Why don't you mm-hmm. go to canvaspeople.com. All right. And then do what? And put a photo of me on into the upload bar. Oh, right. And then you, what? You want me to like hang that over my own bed or something? How did you mm-hmm. clearly read my mind? Well, you know, I, I would, but I already got a picture from canvas people, <sighs> but it, it's really good. It's high quality and everything. I love it. Well, you're in luck because you can decorate all your walls with photos of me because... Oh. <laughs> canvaspeople.com is a very easy to use photo to canvas service that takes your favorite photo memories and turns them into beautiful artwork for you to enjoy every day so instead of snapping that beautiful photo of christine and letting it (laughs) rot in your cell phone which i would you you would and it really hurts me you can bring that photo to life to put on your walls at home in your office or to give as a gift to me well i was thinking i would actually just use it for a different reason because if you have canvas people in your life you can use that make that canvas part of like a wedding or some sort of really professional photo shoot so i was thinking your wedding get the photographer to get a picture of me and geo in our suits and ties (laughs) give that to you as our wedding gift (laughs) and you can put that on your mantelpiece instead (laughs) plus you can recommend for sure that it's going to be perfectly done because over a million people have already bought canvas people and but anyway so that's your wedding gift and if anyone else wanted to give someone they care about a gift we have a code for you we do normally 11 by 14 canvases are priced at 69.99 but for a limited time uh you can get one free 11 by 14 canvas just pay shipping Woohoo! what's the promo code drink what's the promo code drink limited time offer one free 11 by 14 canvas just pay shipping with promo code drink do you want to hear um a story just yes to get in the spirit of why we should be thankful to not have to be alive or experience these things to not have to be alive maybe to be alive but not be killed in one of your gruesome stories okay and also to be thankful knock on wood that there's no poltergeist yeah so bring it on it's called the bullock hotel like sandra yes like sandra oh I actually looked up Bullock Hotel on Google, and the first thing that came up was Sandy's picture, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, Sandy? Yeah. My girl. Oh, it's fine. It's like... Sandy B. Like Sandy and I... She actually grew up in the town over from me in Virginia. Oh, you mentioned that a couple episodes ago, because I was listening to it earlier. I'm just really proud of my people. Yes, you are. Sandy. So, conveniently, the Bullock Hotel takes place in a town called Deadwood. That's extremely convenient. And of course, in the most uh obscure state of america wait let me guess mm-hmm. one of the dakotas yep no way yeah which one south okay you're right south is, dakota. is one of them more obscure than the other we're south. gonna get so much hate mail south dakota whatever hopefully a, a hipster from south dakota listens to us and is like oh i'm so obscure you know what i mean <laughs> isn't yes. that their dream to be like the most obscure person in you're the right world? obscure is not a bad thing no okay 
you're the you're the the biggest underdog really yes and you know what south dakota is never in the news doing bad things so really who's winning south dakota south dakota's winning so in the city of deadwood it's named deadwood because of the dead trees that would grow around the narrow canyon i'm sorry why are dead trees growing let's start there zombie trees Mm -hmm. the dead (laughs) the dead trees that grew in the narrow canyon and the canyon was called deadwood gulch (laughs) sorry so (laughs) it's called the dead woods because they have dead woods growing in the dead woods maybe there's a bunch of trees and they all died so they had already grown and now they're just a bunch of dead trees okay let's hope that's What's what that means gulch look you're asking me a lot that's of a questions. terrible word anyway this is also where the main streets are now built okay where all the dead trees grew apparently gulch avenue i know when i'm dead I, i'll be growing apparently not just being dead your fingernails oh yeah that's true maybe it's the trees fingernails that were growing oh it's probably the hair follicles mm-hmm. and yeah yeah so, in 1876, Deadwood was established, and it was described as being a hell-roaring camp. Listen. Which is what I like to call my house. <laughs> Party Central. Plunger Fort. Party for one. Um, hold on. Hold that thought. All right. This story already has so many keywords. I know. I know. Like, I feel like if, if some of you were... Deadwood, s- hell-roaring camp. If someone were scanning for, like... South Dakota. I said zombie earlier. Like, every word that could possibly be in a in a horror movie. <laughs> right now, everything we have said sounds like a fucked-up, autocorrected message through iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> like, s- we were trying to say, like, some random word. It's like, oh, zombie, deadwood, dead trees, growing, hell-roaring camp, South Dakota. <laughs> Plunger. <laughs> it's like, God damn it, Siri. So, in 1876... Deadwood, the Hell Roaring Camp, was established, and it was complete, quote, with an assortment of not-so-good people. What? So it was, like, known as a bad town. Not-so-good? Like, it was, like, a lot of, like, bad guys, essentially. Like, low-brow, um, like, I don't know, like, criminals and... Yeah, what's the word for that? Um, it was just a rough town. Yeah, 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 okay. So they sent, like, the kind of outcast there, or, like, yeah. the... Okay. And it was so bad and so dangerous that there wasn't even an elected official sheriff. I'm confused because I would think it's so bad because there isn't an elected official (laughs) sheriff. Not like, it's like cause and effect equals uh, effect and cause. Yeah, it's like chicken and the egg. Was there a sheriff (laughs) that caused it to be bad or was it bad? Because, okay. So anyway, it became its own town officially because during the gold rush, it was like like a hot spot on the map. So a lot of people wanted to go there despite that it was a dangerous area. Like okay. They were like just so ready. there was gold there. Yeah. So okay. they were gold hungry and went regardless of how dangerous it was. Okay. Um, one of the people to move there during the gold rush was Seth Bullock. Seth Bullock. And he was quote a straight shooting lawman and outstanding member of society. Oh my god, who wrote this? This <laughs> I got and weirdly every website I looked at about this had a weird language, like very flowery. It's freaking me out a little bit. So this is some of the things that this lawman slash outstanding member of society did. Great. He was a sheriff. Mm. He was a chief engineer of the fire department. Mm. He was a deputy U.S. marshal. He was a senator by 22. He was a captain in the Spanish-American War. And he was the one to propose that we establish the Yellowstone National Park. So I mean... He's just kind of like that overachiever valedictorian we all hate. I'm like, I was about to say, I don't feel great about this guy. I, like no he he makes me not feel good about me mm, that's probably why that's I don't, why i don't like I'm, him i'm projecting i'm, I'm like projecting yep i'm projecting onto seth he also fun fact was the first person in south dakota to plant alfalfa which apparently is a big crop there well that just tops it all off i'll tell you what i'm fucking done now i'm done um also seth and teddy roosevelt became bffs over time and he when teddy roosevelt was appointed vice president he appointed Seth Bullock to be the first forest supervisor. Oh, that's not a thing. It's kind of like when your friend all of a sudden becomes a boss and they yep. just like find a position for you. They make one up. That's what happens when you start working at Nick. All of a sudden I'm going to be forest supervisor. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, we live in a desert. <laughs> the forest supervisor. Why am I gonna supervise? M, forest supervisor. Can I just be the geo supervisor? I can. Ju- You're already Ideally. That. I can just see your business cards now. Nickelode- <laughs> with a little tree a dead tree obviously well duh nickelodeon animation forest supervisor <laughs> um so he was also be- so with that kind of resume oh he yeah. then moves to deadwood and it's like 
crime ridden and there's no discipline there's like no outlaws nothing but outlaws and all of a sudden this good guy comes in and so on day two of him living in deadwood he was appointed sheriff because Ugh. they were like we're desperate and need someone that we can trust and you seem to be like a top of the line kind so of all these outlaws were like we want you to like hey, please put us in jail i don't know who was in charge of this i assuming just the people of deadwood who were looking for law and order i dun, guess done done dun. Um, so they hired, what the first thing he did was he hired a bunch of the bravest men in town. Cause also remember that a bunch of people are moving in at the same time. So sure. he can probably just pick from a whole new lot. Probably. Um, he hired a bunch of the bravest men he could find in the town and made them deputies. Like right away. There was like no training or anything. Just made them deputies and nepotism and locked them up. Oh, what? nepotism. I'd be, I would be the fucking forced supervisor at Nickelodeon if you had the opportunity. <laughs> talk about nepotism Listen, you can bitch about nepotism until you're actually in that position and then you suddenly and then be like nepotism what are you talking you about you appreciate nepotism it's like i worked to supervise this for us i worked for my nepotism so he hired all these people to be deputies and lock up all the bad guys on the streets um my favorite fact about him is he's from canada and he <laughs> just really kind of, that i'm of, just peppering it in out of everything that's your favorite fact look he's known to be like a good guy and of course he would come from the holy homeland guys somebody sent us canada socks i'm wearing them right now whoever sent me canada socks god bless you thank you that was very sweet they're and they're so warm and they go all the way up to my knee and they're like and they're quality they're like socks. the vermont the darn tough socks they're not not fucking around these socks. i'm wearing them right now they're the comfiest socks i've ever owned M goes look i have rugby calves i do i have nice th- thick log legs apparently my yeah. tarantula legs have thickened a little <laughs> your tree my, stump legs my horse tarantula legs <laughs> um no but whoever did that thank you thank you i came over to christine and she was like i have a present for you and i'm i just want you to open this right now and i saw it and my jaw dropped also i just have to say it johnny be good sent um a replacement sweatshirt oh we were apparently told not to say anything no she said you don't have to oh but I oh wanna, I wanna oh throw but johnny be, i was gonna just write something to her but johnny be good thank you so so good johnny be so good jo- so good sent the exact so good. Bah, bah. she got me a whole new sweatshirt to replace my oil stained one the exact same the one. exact same one i guess like i like was pretty uh transparent with my Oh, goodwill. I'm a size large and I needed a simple black sweatshirt. It's not goodwill. Good, it's... God damn it. Good fellow. It's my favorite company and you would think I would know. People are just going to start sending you like goodwill clothes. Don't send me goodwill stuff. Send me stuff from Goodfellow, preferably before Christmas. Uh, I'm a size 11 s- in shoes, a large it. and extra I'm large in sweatshirts, beep, and a 40 32 in pants. Beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> my wedding registry can be found at. <laughs> <laughs> Our Patreon can be. <laughs> send M um, goodwill size 11 shoes. Also, I'm mainly saying my sizes on here because if my mother listens to the show at all, she'll know exactly what she has to get me without weirdly passive aggressively texting me my quote new size since I've probably gotten larger since she last saw me. Oh, rude. So anyway, there you go. All right. Um, he's from Canada. Let's get back to the Okay, facts. okay, okay, okay. The reason he was so disciplined is because he was a military brat, so he was just raised to not tolerate bullshit. Mm. Um, he apparently had piercing gray eyes and his gaze could stop fights. And his grandson <laughs> said that he could outstare a mad cobra or rogue elephant. Okay. Sounds like, I feel like that would be like a, a good review of like a wine or something. Like what? <laughs> it could stop a mad cobra or a rogue elephant. Because it was so, so powerful. Potent? Yeah. Mm. That's what you like, right? Potent? Not, I don't know how wine works. I mean, I don't want to kill an elephant. <laughs> okay. Let's go with it. Sure. So after um, after he locked up all the bad guys, very quickly the town began to flourish with minimal crime. Uh, very Canadian of him. He just stared at everyone with his wine Yeah, he was eyes. just like, get over there before you become a rogue elephant and I have to stop you with right. my gaze. He's going to kill all you cobras. In Montana, he ran a hardware store and decided to bring it uh, with him to deadwood um which is why he was moving there mm. not just for the gold rush but was like oh if people are gonna be there and i'm the only hardware store right. in town i'll make money so a smart businessman so in 1894 he decided that the town needed a nice hotel and his version of nice is like lucille bluth version of nice like it's like nice oh my 
So there were 63 luxury steam heated guest rooms. Steam heated? Well, also this was in, this is before 1900. So Holy like. Holy smokes. Each floor had its own bathroom. I'm just. Very pic- shishi. I'm picturing like, um, steam heated, like there's like sauna, like every room is just a yeah, sauna. That's what I'm assuming <laughs> too. Um, it also had a restaurant that could take care of over 100 guests at one time, and it only served things on the level of caviar, lobster, and pheasant. Uh, wh- where are they getting this in South Dakota? Lobster? In 1894. I don't know if what? I would trust that lobster. No, don't eat that. They're just putting it on a train and sending it. <laughs> it's been on a train for seven weeks. I, <laughs> there was also a library and a parlor in the upper floors and a gambling joint across the street, which also learned people in. Sure. Um, in 1919, Bullock died in the hotel of cancer, and he died in room 211. Oh. Uh, the hotel was said uh, to have been sold to another family uh, who ended up taking care of it until almost around the 1980s, I think 1976. Okay. And they auctioned it off with all the original furniture and auctioned it to the state. Whoa. And in 1990, the town noticed that their tourism was going crazy low. Their population had, like like a tenth of their population had moved away. So like they needed people to be coming into Deadwood. So they decided, oh, well, let's vote on something where all the proceeds can go to fixing up the town Mm. and we need something touristy. And so they brought back gaming slash gambling. And on the main streets of Deadwood, every first floor of all the buildings had um, slot machines. No way. I know. Are you serious? Yeah. What the hell? In 1990, uh, the town actually made a comeback from this, and the proceeds ended up going to restoring old buildings in Deadwood, including the Bullock Hotel. So the hotel remains an upscale hotel, including the original restaurant cellar and gambling in the lobby. They used old wallpaper and paint paint samples. It's still there. It still looks the same and everything. Um, And it looks as original as they could have kept it based on documents from the 1890s. That is so cool that they keep like the paint sample, the wallpaper and the paint. I think that's so cool. They revamped it to look exactly as it did. So I don't know if that's much of a revamping, but whatever. But I mean, if you make it like clean and new, but you like keep all the style, I think that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's the end of the history. Okay. Where are the ghosts? Where are the ghosts? They're right here in this order. Beep. There are, you can take photos in the room that Bullock died and you will see uh, misty figures in the corners of the room or sitting on the bed and it's the bed that he died in. Oh. Um, One photo has shown a white form floating over the bed. Like someone took several pictures at one time. You can see the form like building up. Oh. Um, One man woke up from his sleep in the middle of the night and he was shaken awake by Seth Bullock himself. Uh Uh-uh. And this was in the 1990s. Nope. So... That shouldn't have happened. No. Uh, <laughs> it shouldn't have happened any decade, but nope. especially the Even 1990s. when he was alive. No. Um, one employee turned away from her desk for just a second, and when she turned back around, her drink was thrown off of the bar to the other side of the room oh. by itself. Um, what kind of pissed off ghost is that? Well, apparently he was very proud of his hotel, and so if anyone ever looks lazy or not like working hard enough, he will like fuck with them. Oh my! I would never be able to work. Imagine there. having that boss where like they're invisible, <laughs> and every time you think yeah. like you're getting away with something, all of a sudden things get thrown away or at you they're or just from you. Casually omnipresent, and you can't <laughs> you can't even look at your phone or it will break. <laughs> so Bullock has been seen in solid form walking the halls and staring at people with his notorious stare as he passes them by. I hope there's no cobras in the- I'm sorry, I take it back. I'm sorry, rewind, delete. <laughs> You're the one that deletes it. I know, I'm telling myself in the future. Guests have heard a friendly male voice call their name when they're alone. I don't know. A friendly? <laughs> I don't know, with a fucking Casper? That's nice. A man's footsteps and whistling have also been caught on tape, apparently, on Ghost Adventures. And most people ha- actually report this pretty regularly going down the hall. So they'll hear a man walking in heavy boots and whistling when they're the only people that have, um, like, have a room filled for that night on that hall. Spooky. Because also the 63 rooms have been converted to 28 now oh. to make the rooms bigger. Sure. Um, a young boy who was a guest in the hotel, I guess, got lost. And he ended up finding his way back to his parents' room. And when they asked how he found his way back, he said that an old-time cowboy named Captain Seth <gasps> brought him back to the room. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. 
Um, when employees, like I said, when employees appear lazy or not working, plates and glasses will shake and fly across the restaurant, sometimes crashing onto the ground or into the wall next to them. That's terrifying. Kitchen items and appliances will turn on and off by themselves. Items in the kitchen and the restaurant have been moved to another location after closing. A staff member witnessed several bar stools moving by themselves in the basement. Mm -mm. Um, There's a broken clock in room 305, and it has actually chimed every time, not every time, but sometimes when the maids come in, it'll all of a sudden work just to chime for them, like to say hello. No, thanks. Um, Cleaning carts move by themselves. One maid was actually sprayed with a shower, like a Uh, shower head that turned on by itself while she was trying to clean the tub. That's so sad. It just turned on just to be like, here, fuck you. Like, enjoy being wet and gross for the rest of your shift. she wasn't even being lazy. Yeah, she was actually working. That's rude. Maybe she wasn't doing it well enough. Maybe she was Snapchatting in the bathtub. Ooh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Um, She Also, let's take a minute to everyone listening, find your nearest haunted house. And I want to see the Snapchat geotag. We should figure out what all these things look like. Can you imagine? There's got to be one with like a ghost emoji or something next to it if they know it's what? haunted enough. I'm so confused. What are you talking like about? Like if we went to like Winchester Mystery House, I wonder what the geotags look like on Snapchat. You mean like the filters or like? Like the location. I wonder what it looks like. Like if you go to a haunted enough place, they have to have like a haunted ghost design, oh, right? Oh, maybe. But what about geo? You said something about geo. It's called a geotag. Oh my God. I thought you meant geo. God. Oh my God. Yeah. I was For like, once in my life, I was not I, referring to I him. I was like, what the hell does this have to do with Geo? Yeah. Okay. I got you. You're on board now? Yeah. Okay. I'll like, s- I wonder, like, if we went to, like, the Whaley house, like, what the filter looks like on I Snapchat. Like, one of them has to have, like, a cool design for being I notoriously haunted. I went to haunted. Whaley house. They did not have a cool Snapchat. You're right. They didn't. I did that, too. And it just says Whaley house. It said, yeah, it said it, but mm-hmm. it wasn't, like, a cool thing. Someone find me a cool haunted house geotag, please. Thanks. Also, um... I told my brother earlier today that I want to create a geo tag for our house so that we can tag, G- like geo tag our pl- our location. That's beautiful. I know. I'm gonna work on it. Also, we will low key know who our closest in distance uh, fans are. Yeah, true. Because all of a sudden they'll be Snapchatting and see the geo tag and be like, "Oh my god!" They'll be like, "Oh my god, we're nearby." They'll be like, "Geo is in a one mile radius." <laughs> so anyway. There is also a little girl there. We don't know what her purpose is, but she has been seen in the basement Mm. uh, where victims of smallpox and (gasps) typhoid were actually quarantined at one point because the building also stayed as a hospital during that time. Of course it did. So there have been mainly that little girl, but there's also been elderly and children um, that are regularly seen throughout the years. And we assume that they were all like patients who passed away. Oh, an apparition of said girl. She's apparently under 10 years old and she's regularly seen by guests. Her favorite thing to do is giggle and then the toilet paper in the bathroom one will unravel itself. <laughs> little bastard. Oh, love her. Love her. Um, she's spunky. So spunky. Uh, guests' personal belongings will have been moved around the room or found in odd places. People will wake up at night and see their shower faucet their lights and their tv all turned on their like shower faucets their lights and, their and the TV. tv they'll all be turned on like you'll wake up in the middle of the night and all of a sudden That's they're all on in your room extremely terrifying to wake up to all the water and so like jarring yeah, like you wake up so and you're like jarring. you're like so like disoriented and don't know what's going on everything's bright there's loud noises uh-huh. water's running that's terrifying um tvs and phones will turn on when they aren't plugged in Shadows will follow you down the hallways and into the showers. Oh, what a perv shadow. Alarm clocks will go off by themselves at the wrong time that you set them to. Nice. And they will also, of course, go off at 3 a.m. Always 3 a.m. An antique clock that no longer functions will chime on its own in the lobby. Good. And people have seen Seth Bullock literally hovering over them at night. Like, like horizontally? Oh, like he, like, so he's like almost lying on top of you with a lot of space in between? Yeah. Or is he, or is like, he like standing? standing and you can see his, like the soles of his feet? Ew. I don't know. I feel like it'd be creep, less creepy if he were standing. Because otherwise he'd be uh, yeah. face to face. What if he were just diagonal? <laughs> what if, oh my God. What if he's like just kind of like chilling? What if he's like upside down and you can just see his butt? What if he's actually just doing like a spinning cannonball oh. over you? So you get all angles of him. I would probably get motion sick. So one time, a chair got thrown across the room at an employee who was sleeping on the job. Good. 
uh, the little girl will go and poke people's sides in the lobby, which I don't care if you're alive or dead. I fucking hate you. Don't you do, do that. that. It's not fucking it's funny. It's never been favorite. funny. It's never if been anyone funny. out there thinks it's funny to do, it's not. You're a, you're lying to yourself. So here we go. M's weakness: eighth vertebrae and <laughs> side disembodied poke, feet. Side poking and disembodied. So I can't win. Criminals and my fingernails and my like apparently that weird like belly button unraveling thing. Oh right, right. So get on it. <sighs> Really, I'm just, I'm actually like a big wuss. So no matter what you do, I'm going to have a problem with it. Aren't we all? People have turned around and seen Seth Bullock inches away from their face staring at them. Okay, this is, Seth is giving me, he needs to relax. (laughs) Seth needs to calm down. I think he got a lot of attention during his life and he just needs it to keep going. He's like, have I shown you my resume? Yeah. (laughs) I was a forest keeper. What was he? (laughs) A forest supervisor. What same thing? (laughs) Uh, Anytime someone has reportedly tried to steal from the hotel... The doors will lock on themselves so they can't leave the room, Ooh. which is kind of like cool because his whole job originally in the town was to keep bad people from he doing bad sheriff. things. And now he's locking people until they like decide not to steal it and the doors don't open themselves. What do you, what are they possibly stealing? I don't know. It makes me think of that friends episode where they're stealing like salt and batteries. I and was going to say, you could see like a notepad. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, people's luggage will be found sitting outside their hotel room. Mm. Like at like, if it's unpacked, it will now all of a sudden be packed in the suitcase sitting outside of their room when they're walking down the hallway to be like, get the fuck out, I guess. I guess I don't want them there. People will knock on the door while guests are sleeping. And when people go to check the door, um, now now where they're standing, the opposite wall from them will, down, will knock. Oh, so like they'll hear a knock, go over to that part of the room. And then when they get there, the knock will be on the other side of the wall. Oh, of their room? Of their room oh, no, where no, there's no. no door. No, 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 no. Um, guests will talk to people in the restaurant thinking that they're waiters and then realize they were never there. (laughs) (laughs) What? Like, I guess they're, they think they're ordering something and then the waiter like is actually a dead person and is not going to bring you your food that you just ordered. I'm going to do that. I'm going to walk around as a ghost and just be like, I think you're going to do that as a live person and take people's (laughs) orders and then be like, just zip away and be like, Oh, I was never here. Sorry. You'll never get those garlic fries, Sandra. (laughs) Cause I ate them. (laughs) Because now they're mine. Bellhops have to use the buddy system with walkie-talkies when riding the elevator in case it breaks down. Oh, bellhop buddy system. Uh, Precious. The bottles in the bar uh, will... Don't mess with the bottles in the bar. They will... Well, sometimes it's a good thing. He will drop or raise the levels of the alcohol in them. Oh, okay. So sometimes the bottles will refill themselves. Wait, that. But sometimes they will empty themselves, which is, I think, what you would probably do. Seth. (laughs) <laughs> Seth, thank you for the idea. Duly Seth. noted, when I die, I will be drinking all the alcohol. Also, before I die, are you here? Are you listening? Because that would be really helpful to me. If you could just keep refilling her boxed wine. Listen, I have friends giving on Wednesday. <laughs> those, I could use a wall of alcohol if those you can find levels, it. You can knock, you can stare in my eyes, I don't care. But if you refill those bottles, <laughs> I'll be eternally grateful. There is banging and sounds of construction from empty rooms next door. Guests have reported seeing a drunk man swaying in the restaurant, but wearing old-fashioned clothes and staring. Who do you think that is? I think it's Seth. Wait, really? I don't know. He's, like, apparently, like, the he's... bottles are going down. Maybe uh, he's drinking, and then maybe. drunk ghost him is just swaying around. He just seemed so, like, uptight. I thought maybe he Maybe will... he needed a drink. I mean, he clearly needed a drink. People have heard a man say in their ear, can you hear me yet? Okay. That actually just gave me chills. People have seen an old... have People have seen... Um, old fashioned dress people standing in the middle of the casino in the lobby and then disappear. The restaurant's kitchen appliances will shut down and break even if they're brand new and will only start working when getting changed out or threatened to be changed out. <laughs> it's like, all right, fine. You can have them back, I guess. That happened with my hard drive once. I was like, fine, I'll just get a new hard drive. And all of a sudden it was like hard drive recognized. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's the secret. And then finally, where you'll be in the afterlife, you can hear men laughing and glasses clinking in the basement after hours and there's a little girl down there too huh yep okay there's smallpox there's but there's glasses clinking and laughter all right i like to think that those smallpox people are just having a good time now all right good right yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay tell me tell me a tale you sound like you're just like trying to appease me but no shut up I love wine. I I know. I just don't love when wine companies try to get you with those keywords like, uh, it's herbaceous and it's opulent. It's like, no, I just want to know if it tastes good. 
Also, I just feel stupid because I don't even know what those words mean. Nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows. They just want their wine. They want it good. They want. They know what they want, and they want it now. They want it good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a protest. Woo! <laughs> we want it now. <laughs> when do we want wine? When do we want it? Immediately. But you can do it, can't you? Here's the thing. I found First Leaf Wines. It's the only wine club that's based on your taste, my taste. There it is. There it is. That's what's important. <laughs> I'm important. Uh, I received my first leaf order. There are some damn good wines. Why don't you tell us how it works, Em? Uh, well, from what you've told me, because you won't shut up about it. I, I can't. Is that you get to pick your own. You First, you get an introductory three pack of wine for just five bucks each. Normally, these bottles will go for $20 each, if not more. But you get them for just five bucks. That's kind of great. And when your bottles arrive, you rate the wine to get personalized selections based on your unique tastes. The, and it's kind of like a, a Pandora is what you tell me a lot. Yeah. That, you know, you get to pick your selections and then they break it down. And the more wines that you rate, the better recommendations you end up getting. Yeah, you can customize uh, your first leaf order by selecting the color, wine regions, and frequency of your wine shipments. Which I know is a daily factor for you. All as often as possible. ASAP, we want it now as often as possible. They also eliminate the middleman and work directly with the world's foremost wineries and your three favorite places, France, Italy, and Napa Valley. I'll be there. So if you don't have First Leaf, go get First Leaf. I mean, it is my new favorite way to rate and buy quality wine. So to order your three-pack of introductory wine for $15, go to tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. That is three bottles of wine for only $15, so $5 a bottle at tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. Experience First Leaf today at tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. Do do do. Bye. All right. This is one that I've gotten a lot of requests for. Like, a lot. Okay, I'm ready. And weirdly enough, I didn't know anything about it. And mm. it, Yeah, it was one of those ones that was like always in the back of my mind. And I was like, I have to look into that. And then I was listening to My Favorite Murder, and they, like, referenced it. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I just gotta <laughs> okay, do it. Okay, now I've gotta do this. I gotta do it. <laughs> Karen told me so. Well, if Karen or Georgia tell you to do anything, you just oh, fucking you do, it. do it. You close your eyes and do it. They say jump off a cliff and you swan dive. <laughs> Head first. <laughs> I'm taking you with me. <laughs> okay. This is the story of the Wineville Chicken Coop murders. Okay. I've heard... Of the chicken coop. Actually, I think Cece. Has, is Cece one of the people who's... Honestly, I have like 80 I think when requests. we first started this podcast, Maybe. she, like at the very beginning, was like, if this were to continue, you should do the chicken coop murders. <laughs> if this is a real thing. It, if you're serious about it, maybe give this one a try. I'm sure we responded, oh, it's not. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I've heard... You know it's, it's well requested by people if even i've heard people request right it. exactly and so. we don't know what it is it's not like we knew about it hit me with it all right this takes place in the late 1920s um a guy named gordon stewart northcott was born in saskatchewan canada hmm, my favorite saskatchewan saskatchewan is that correct mm-hmm. okay i think canadians you're, you're the expert as the biological child of his sister and his father oh so it's starting out good. It's a rough, bumpy road. It's a hell roaring camp. It's a, it's a, <laughs> what was this taking place in Deadwood? There's zombie trees in Deadwood. <laughs> so basically his sister was his mother. Right. And his father was his grandfather. No, wait. Yes. Wait. His, he, it was oh, a, a oh, dad yes. and a sister. You're right, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So his dad was his grandfather also. Oh no. Oh no. Grandpa daddy. No, 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 no. And sissy mom. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So she was his mother and his sister. In 1926, he moved to a city in Southern California called Wineville. You got to <laughs> stop naming towns, Christine. I can't. You got to stop establishing towns just to name them. I mean, Deadwood, Wineville. They're not very They great. both sound like towns we would have named. It- I think maybe we did. If we ever get like a giant like pair of scissors to a land and we get to name it <laughs> at like the ribbon cutting ceremony, I'll be like Deadwood and you'll be like Wineville. And they'll be like, it's called Deadville. And they'll be like, obviously. Dead wine. Dead wine. Ooh. Dead wine. Let's not talk about it. Let's, Let's just keep going. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Dead wine. The town. He moved there to become a chicken farmer. Mm-hmm. As most do. I mean... It was known for its wine and its grapes, obviously. 
I'm like, why not just move there to work on a vineyard? Why not? Why not? You always catch that I never do. <sighs> it's my one talent. It's your wine talent. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hyper aware. <laughs> okay. So he moved to become a chicken farmer. Um, he had a 13-year-old nephew named Sanford Clark. Nephew or son or brother or grandson? Uh, he had a 13-year-old relative named Sanford <laughs> Clark. And he convinced Sanford's mother, who was his sister, to send... I'm sorry. I don't know. A different sister. <laughs> it was uh, his other relative. Listen, I need a drink. Hey, maybe we can get shirts now and say, listen. If someone can design one. Yeah, we want someone to design stuff for us. Because I can type out listen in like Comic Sans and no one wants that. Why well, wouldn't th- I would think more like Ariel Bold. Really? Or like a copper black. I feel like Wingdings might be the way to go. <laughs> I think, oh, what if we wrote listen in Zodiac? Oh, oh, wait, that's actually real fun. Okay, we'll talk about okay, it. Okay, we'll talk about it. Okay. But like, what about Papyrus? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm okay. Go back. Go back. The only thing that matters here is that his nephew, Sanford Clark, 13 years old, moved down with him to help with the chickens and the chicken coops. Well, yeah, you need help. You need help. You need help with the chickens. You can't coop up those chickens all by yourself. I don't get why. Chickens are so fucking low maintenance to raise. Really? Yeah. They're kind of like loud and peckish. I mean, they suck, but they're low maintenance. As long as you like keep them away from foxholes. Yeah. I mean, you, you just need a heat lamp and you need feed. You literally just got to put them in a little cage. It's really not hard. They don't need, like, exercise. They don't need... He, no. They have a rooster to tell Especially them. Especially in the 20s when chickens were actually fucking healthy to eat. Yeah, right. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. Let's. So, he convinced um, his sister to send her son Sanford down um, as, like, to help on his, quote... Chicken apprentice. Chicken fr- He's the chicken apprentice. He's the... Ch- no, there's no... Chick... He's the a chick chaprenas. No, there's nothing good. Chicken training. <laughs> chicken training. <laughs> and you said there was nothing. I spoke too soon. <laughs> okay. So, so Sanford was the chicken training. Oh, I hate myself and and you also. Okay. Um, unfortunately. This started a two-year nightmare for Sanford. Um, Northcott, his uncle, began abusing him, beating him, sexually assaulting him. He was only 13 at this time. Um, And then let's... There are multiple facets to this story. So I'm going to fast forward to uh, 1928, which was two years later. On March 10th, nine-year-old Walter Collins disappeared after going to see a movie in Lincoln Heights, Los Angeles. Uh, there was this massive nationwide manhunt, uh, and he was found all the way, I think it was about five months later. Uh, it was reported that he was found in DeKalb, Illinois. Mm-hmm. So his mother, Christine Collins, was thrilled and paid for him to be transferred back to L.A. so she could be with him again. He arrived uh, safe and sound back home in L.A., and Christine went to meet him and said, he's an imposter, that's not my son. Ooh. Uh, authorities told her to take him home and try him out for a couple of weeks. <laughs> give him a whirl. Just like... <laughs> give it a spin. It's like a, you're selling washing machines at, at Home Depot. <laughs> like, what do you mean give it a... Like, try it out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, just see see if he feels right. Like, 100% back guarantee. <laughs> so she agreed, but came back pretty soon after and said, no, this isn't my son. I know it's not my son. Uh, She even brought dental records. She brought signed statements from people who knew her son, Walter, to prove that it wasn't him. Um, But because, remember, we're in the 1920s, um, the police called her a lunatic and claimed she was just trying to get the state to take care of her child and was trying to embarrass the LAPD. Oh, my God. Uh, Specifically, Captain J.J. Jones. Of course. That's a name. That's a name, apparently. He might as well live in dead wine. It's not even a real name. I bet uh, he signs his name in papyrus. <laughs> Dude, wouldn't that be cool? What if you could sign your name in like Comic Sans? Oh, Wingdings. There's someone out there who has practiced you the, know. the art of Microsoft Word font format. If you've done that, 
If you have ever written anything in papyrus, you better send that shit to us and you better send it quick. Immediately. Curls MT? <laughs> get on it. <laughs> I could go on forever. <laughs> okay. I have problems. All right. Um, so J.J. Jones committed her to a psychiatric hospital. Of course he did. <sighs> Meanwhile, two other boys named Nelson and Lewis Winslow, who are brothers, they were 10 and 12 years old. Mm-hmm. They went missing on their way home on May 16th, 1928. Their parents started to receive strange letters from the boys. One said they were heading to Mexico, and another said they planned to stay missing as long as they could to become famous. <laughs> That's why we became famous, right? You can't find us. We like went we like went to LA and started writing letters to our parents being like, We're missing, you can't find us and they're like, We know where you are, just we only got a show there. where we triangulate our location all the time, but we're missing. <laughs> we're missing. You don't know where we are, Mom. <laughs> we're somewhere but nowhere all at once. She's like, But I just mailed you all those socks you left behind. <laughs> and I that, just mailed you that blank fucking shirt box and, and that, that weird CDs. CDs. <laughs> the sleep of CDs killed. By the way, that woman has never sent me a box or a package ever yeah, but you know that was the first one like not in college not <laughs> when i lived in boston that one this was the first package and it was a weird case of cds from the <laughs> early 90s that weren't even there wasn't a note Listen. and then when i she called me and she was like did you get the box did you like it and i'm like i don't Do know where like to begin <laughs> you were like, like i thought someone kidnapped am you I suppo- <laughs> Send me, like, am ransom i supposed letters? to like the shirts that are for you the j crew like slim fit shirts what is <laughs> Okay, but you know that she said the shirts being like, okay, M will put logos on. And then was like, well, I have to send something for M. Oh, here's a sleeve of CDs. Exactly. To like cover the fact that they're like, <laughs> it's like, here, you, her. you keep the garbage I don't want to bring to goodwill. <laughs> but also, here's your first present in 25 years, which is actually my own present. <laughs> Thank you in advance. Also, I'm not going to tell you what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Just figure it out. She was probably also like, you said goodwill. On, you said you were size 11 goodwill. <laughs> I'm sending you all my goodwill donations. That's I, exactly some shit she would do too. I wasn't even surprised. Like I think I was with Allison. She was like, "What is the point of any of this?" And I was like, well, "It's better to not ask." <laughs> she'll <laughs> she'll let me know eventually. You'll get like a frantic message like, "Have you done the job?" And like, have you have you done the dark deed I've requested? <laughs> God, you're my ch- chicken training. Chicken and training. Chicken training. <laughs> god that's foul it's get <gasps> it i was gonna say it's not that bad m but wow you just blew my mind i just got gotcha. you that was foul okay so let's get back to this let's try at least i mean let's try so they were trying to become famous by going missing i mean who doesn't again around the same time a mexican child's body was found shot and decapitated Ugh in los angeles but police didn't immediately connect any of these crimes um because they were just so random random um but as you can probably guess by me bringing them up they, they were have something related. to do to each other god damn it em. i'm yep you gotta jump on that i went to grad school you so gotta jump go. on my my brain wave when we say things i at think the same you time. need to jump on your brain wave you seem to have, be having another stroke my brother just texted me fuck i forgot my dongle what's a dongle it's like with the new phones where you have to plug in they don't have an um a headphone jack oh <gasps> so you have to plug in like you have to like get a a dongle that, see i told you apple likes to fuck with you oh oh yes they oh do. you need a new update well how about i make your current phone really slow oh you want to listen to music well have, you have to buy this other thing same with the laptops now that they don't have cd ports you have to buy an, an 80 dollar port to put cds in mm-hmm. how are you going to listen to that sleeve of cds linda sent i well i already broke them in half and threw them <laughs> in the trash <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever unless she like i bet you she wanted some weird cryptic shit done to them like she wanted me to download them and turn them all into one big cd she for her. probably thought you, you were going to put our entire podcast onto a cd so she probably wanted me to throw them all on a floppy disk or some shit like that. <laughs> uh all right here's the thing in september of 1928 a few months later winifred clark the mother of gordon northcott's nephew so the mother of sanford clark so his sister um contacted u.s authorities to tell them that her nephew gordon Mm -hmm. had kidnapped and was holding her son sanford hostage in california 
Uh, Sanford's family had been receiving suspicious letters saying all was well, but they didn't believe it. Um, plus, he was only 15, and he had been gone for over two years at this point. <clears throat> so they were like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. So Sanford's older sister, Jessie, decided to go down to the ranch um, to check in on things. So she raised the money to go down to Wineville, California, and check up on her younger brother. She got there, stayed for a few days, and immediately knew something was up, something fishy was going on. Mm -hmm. So at one point when Northcott wasn't around, Sanford admitted everything to his sister about what was going on. Um, she went back to Canada and notified U.S. authorities that there were crimes happening at her uncle's uncle's <laughs> I'm trying to, uncle's this, farm. This family tree is just like a big circle. At her uncle's chicken coop. So on August 31st, 1928, two uh, U.S. Immigration Service inspectors visited the chicken ranch in Wineville. Um, they found 15-year-old Sanford Clark at the ranch and took him into custody. Northcott had seen the agents driving up the long road to his ranch. Uh, and before fleeing into the tree line, he told uh, his nephew, Sanford, to stall the agents or he would shoot him from the tree line. Oh, shit. With a rifle. So Sanford stalled the authorities and Northcott kept on running. But when uh, Sanford felt like he was safe enough, he told them everything that had happened. He told them about the assault, about the rape, um, the beatings, the death threats. He said Mexican boys would arrive in Northcott's car and then later disappear. Mm. Um, he also told them about the murder of four boys, an unnamed Mexican boy, the Winslow brothers... And Walter Collins. Mm. So remember Walter Collins and Christine, his mother. Mm -hmm. So police, she was still in the insane asylum. Okay, or right. Wherever she had been sent um, because they didn't believe her. So they interviewed Walter, who claimed to be her son. And right. he confessed that he was not Walter, but Arthur Hutchins Jr., a runaway from Iowa, who had been picked up by a drifter who commented how similar he looked to the missing child in L.A. named Walter Collins. Mm. Arthur decided he wanted to go to Hollywood and meet his cowboy hero. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, what was that guy's name from last time? Oh, Seth Bullock? <laughs> cowboy Seth. Cowboy Seth. Captain Seth. Cat oh, never mind. Uh, meet his cowboy hero actor, Tom Mix, who was Hollywood's first Western star, apparently. Oh. He was in like 290 movies or something. Jesus. Yeah. And we don't know his name anymore? I know. He was huge. Apparently, he was like... Whoops, he's rolling over in his grave. I know. He like apparently created the whole Western genre as an actor. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he wanted to get to Hollywood and meet his cowboy hero. Don't we all? Mm -hmm. Um. So he decided to impersonate Walter, who was missing. And he looked pretty similar. Um, so then they were like, okay, Christine, I guess you can leave the mental hospital. Uh, Words I hope to hear someday. <laughs> Sorry. That's <laughs> fucked up. Uh, she eventually filed a lawsuit against the LAPD and was awarded a hefty sum. I think in today's money it was like $156,000, but it was never paid to her. Ooh. So the real Walter, this is what happened to him. Sanford explained that the real Walter had actually been abducted by Northcott and held at his farm. He was being kept in a chicken coop while being regularly molested. Mm. A few days after he'd abducted Walter, Northcott got a call from his mother, Sarah Louise Northcott, and she said she wanted to come visit for a few days. So Northcott tried to keep his mother away from the chicken coop as best he could, but eventually she discovered Walter in, in there. Uh, she told her son, Northcott, that Walter would be able to identify him and it was too risky to keep him alive. She insisted that they silence him permanently <gasps> and decided all three of them, including the 15-year-old nephew, uh, would murder him simultaneously so that nobody could implicate one of the others if they ever confessed oh. uh, without implicating themselves. Uh, Northcott suggested using a gun, but his mother said it would, that would be too loud. So she chose the blunt end of an axe. Oh, shit. And while he was sleeping in a cot in one of the chicken coops, she bludgeoned him with the axe, then passed it along, and all three bludgeoned him until he was dead. Oh, wow. The two Winslow brothers, the 10 and 12-year-olds who had gone missing, um, had also been bludgeoned in the same way. Ooh, Yikes. So Sanford was telling the story to police and they went and kind of 
looked around and they found evidence uh, supporting his story. They found bones in quicklime pits, human skull fragments, and clothing that would fit boys of that age, including a Boy Scout cap. Yeesh. Um, so his story uh, went public. The fake Walter Collins admitted he was, you know, a hoax. Um, Northcott fled to Canada with his mother, but they were both arrested and he confessed to killing more than five boys and his mother pled guilty to killing Walter Collins. So Northcott allegedly had killed over 20 boys. Oh, shit. But the state of California did not have enough evidence to indict him of those killings. They were only able to charge him with the two cases of the Winslow brothers and the, quote, headless Mexican is what the media called. Oh, my God. I know. I know. The fucking worst. It, like, makes my skin crawl. He was a teenager from Mexico. That's horrible. Yes. Um, During his trial, Northcott fired three attorney... Attorneys. (laughs) Three attorneys. (laughs) That's how much he should serve. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's hope. During his trial, Northcott fired three attorneys and then decided he'd be his own attorney. Of course. That's how it always goes. Let's see how that goes. Uh, He put himself on the stand and would ask himself questions and then answer them. God. Like, (sighs) no. Um, He admitted to abusing young boys because he loved them. Oh. Okay. Yep. He called his mother to testify for him, and she claimed she was actually his grandmother because her husband had raped her daughter, Winifred, and Northcott was Winifred's son. Listen, I mm-hmm. can't I can't follow this. I'm no, just... it makes sense, though, if her... Because if her, his father was also his grandpa. Yeah. And he was married to that woman. Oh, sure. Okay, so... Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So whether or not he she raised him biologically... She's still right. his grandmother. Okay. Um, Northcott also claimed to have an incestuous incestuous relationship with Sarah Louise, the Ugh. guardian, uh, and that his father had molested him. So it was just a big old cluster. Yeah. Um, so Northcott was sentenced to death in February of 1929. He was hanged on October 2nd, 1930, at the age of 23. So he had killed allegedly... A, over 20 young boys child children jeez by the age of 23 oh my god um as he awaited execution by hanging he amused himself by making lewd gestures at his jailers sending police on wild goose chases by giving them like fake false information and all yeah that. yeah and cruelly taunting the mothers of his victims so for example um walter's mother he told her if you come to the jail i'll tell you what happened to your son? Because they, they never found his body. That's so fucking hard. And then she got there and he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of that boy. Da, 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 da. That's so heartbreaking. It's awful. And she spent the rest of her life believing he was alive because she said they never found his body. So I'm going to keep hope. So she spent her entire life looking for him, mm. even though all evidence points to that he had killed him. But he to the grave yeah. said i don't know what you're talking about and toyed with her basically um so all evidence says he you know he did it he did it but since they never found the body the his mother couldn't bear Ugh, to bear. that's so rough it was really sad um his last words before the trap door swung open were say a prayer for me the, n- no nobody's gonna do that nope no I mean, I will, but it won't work. <laughs> because I don't actually really want it to happen. Because <laughs> God is like, mm, uh-uh. <laughs> Never mind. Mm-mm. So he then was hanged, and he was uh, on the rope for 12 minutes before he died. Jeez. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. Yikes. Due to um, the negative publicity that Wineville received oh god it's a tragedy yeah of all places why do in i know i know don't ruin i'm not trying to why ruin wineville that's like going to santa claus indiana and like ruining their reputation (laughs) you know and just making them rename it yeah it's just a mess it's not okay so because of the negative publicity wineville had to change its name no they changed its name to miraloma in 1930 
well, which I've actually heard of. Anyone who lives in Mira Loma, sorry, you lost a good opportunity. Listen, you had Wineville. We gave it to you. We trusted you. Were you were reckless with it. You reckless. All this right. is why we can't have nice things, Mira Loma. And that's why we drink. So the only remaining references of the community are Wineville Avenue, Wineville Road, and Wineville Park. The three streets that your relatives probably live on, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I'll take Wineville Park. That sounds <laughs> that sounds good. Um, so today, to sum this up, the notorious series of murders that um, happened, the chicken coop murders, are seen um, in pop culture in the movie Changeling. Mm-hmm. Very famous movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Angelina Jolie. Uh, episode of Criminal Minds. My- my favorite show <laughs> and the fifth season of American horror story hotel. So those are like the most current references. Yeah. References. And I think there are more, but those are the most notable. So yeah, really fucked up. Um, super fucked up the whole thing, the changeling thing where, it, where the, um, mother was like, this isn't my son. And they're like, Oh, you're just crazy. Yeah. Go take him home and see. It's like so you, fucked up. Isn't the thing that you're supposed to trust more than anyone is a mother's intuition? You'd think so. But boys will be boys. But they she's a, just being different. And she's a woman. So, like, right, how does course. she really know? Right. Intuition? No. <laughs> no. So, anyway, that's the story of the Wineville Chicken Coop murders. Thank you all for suggesting that. I hope I did it some justice. Thank you guys for listening. Am I doing my spiel? Yeah, please. I need a drink. You can uh, find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find us at ATWWD Podcast. You can also find our secret group on Facebook where people just won't shut up in all the best ways. Oh, the best ways. Uh, you can find our website, and that's why we drink.com. You can find our merch site, and that's why we drink.bigcartel.com. You can find our Patreon. Please donate atwwd podcast you can also email us and that's why we drink at gmail.com please send in your true crime and paranormal personal stories we do a listener's episode every first of the month and geo's adorable oh my god yes also send your and send in your artwork yeah send in your artwork if now you've... that we've got merch endless possibilities yes we'd love to just feature you guys are so creative and much more creative than we are and we'd Mm -hmm. love to feature your stuff on our stuff if you're willing and we'd love to give you a plug and whatever so send it on over to our email um that's all i got that's all we got and that's why we drink and that's why we drink i'm sad to leave you guys but we gotta say bye oh god don't you're oh ow (laughs) That was a good one. Okay. I even stayed quiet for a second, <laughs> even though I wanted to yell. Um, and that's why we drink. Stop taking my wine away from me, though. <laughs> like, I appreciate the sound effect, but stop taking my wine. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>